Welcome to Microdosing Table Talks, the world's first podcast dedicated exclusively to learning more about, you guessed it, microdosing. For those new to the community, microdosing is the practice of consuming a psychedelic substance in tiny subhallucinogenic doses with the purpose of enhancing one's quality of life. While this practice has its roots in ancient and indigenous traditions, there's still a lot to learn and a great deal of mystery to uncover. Here at Microdosing Institute, our mission is to merge and honor this ancient wisdom with the growing body of scientific knowledge. In the podcast, we'll introduce you to experts in the psychedelic space to bring you a better understanding of how microdosing can truly serve us, both as individuals and humanity at large. Before we begin, we'd like to extend a thank you to our friends at microdose.nl for sponsoring this episode. Microdose.nl is Europe's number one shop for all of your microdosing needs. For our community members based in the European Union, check out microdose.nl before your next microdosing cycle. Now, let's go ahead with today's episode. Usually, um, on this podcast, the Microdosing Institute interviews people that contribute to the microdosing field. Um, but that leaves two very important people out that I think deserve uh, a lot more attention than they usually get. Uh, so today we're turning the tables on them and I'm going to be interviewing the founders of the Microdosing Institute. My name is Alex van Binsbergen and I'm uh, sitting here today with uh, Hein and Jacobin. Welcome. Um, Thank you. Jacobin van der Weide is a holistic coach and psychedelic guide. Since 2003, she has been a service of the psychedelic renaissance working for a smart shop, a retreat center, and several non-profit organizations, before creating the Microdosing Institute as a platform for education, community, and research in 2017, together with Hein Pijnacker. Hein is a microdosing coach and NLP coach, a bridge builder, and an independent researcher. He has been working with psychedelics for over, the, for over 30 years, exploring consciousness, guiding psychedelic group sessions, Starting Microdosing Institute has been an important step on his quest to learn everything about the healing potential of microdosing. Welcome you both. Um, I'm really excited to dive down into your personal history with microdosing um, because you started the Institute in 2017, but that's not something you usually start out of the blue. So there must be some history before that. Hein, perhaps you can take us along the experience that brought you to this field of interest. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I've, since I was seventeen, eighteen, I was be I was interested in in uh, the healing power of uh, psychedelics in general. Uh, of course, then I, I didn't know that there were healing powers, but I was uh, interested in uh, uh, mind altering uh, substances and and um, um, means like uh, meditation and Buddhism and uh, breath work. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, uh, when I was on that path, I, I read a, a lot about Carlos Castaneda. So he, uh, uh, yeah, I was interested in shamanism. Um, so uh, uh, psychedelics were uh, playing a, r a large role on that. And um, so yeah, after. 30 years of uh, uh, guiding people and having psychedelic sessions, uh, I stumbled upon microdosing and that was because I, um, uh, yeah, we, we used to uh, do it on, on festivals and in, uh, in, in safe settings like uh, at the beach and in the forest and in nature. Um, and, um, but my best friend had cluster headaches and um, so uh, he stumbled upon a website 20 years ago uh, called Cluster Busters and um, they mentioned that um, for people with cluster headaches, psychedelics could be uh, a, a medicine. So he started to experiment with that, uh, but he needed someone, of course, uh, who guided him or that he didn't want to do it himself. So a lot of times we did it uh, together. And it really helped him to to uh, uh, abort his uh, attacks. Um, but you can imagine that a large dose is very hard to plan in your daily life. And if you feel it coming, uh, yeah, it, it's hard to 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 plan that. So uh, a lot of times he was uh, too late, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, after a while he, he got more and more in isolation and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. Uh, but um, uh, so uh, after a while, 
eight years ago he um, decided to step out of life uh, not voluntarily but because it was too much the cluster headaches um, so and that woke me up of course and and I was in shock at first but um, I really uh, uh, got interested in in the research behind psychedelics so I started to to do my own research and uh, uh, yeah I, I was really amazed by the fact that a, a, a mushroom that has been growing for millions of years in uh, in, uh, uh, in on the earth uh, is an illegal substances for people with cluster headaches and it, it's a, a medicine for them so I was really surprised that um, yeah that they couldn't have uh, legal access to, to that yeah. medicine so um, uh, so yeah I stumbled upon microdosing and I thought okay hmm that could be maybe a sort of a preventive medicine for for people with cluster headaches. So so uh, yeah, I, I raised the question: How do I find out if that's the case? Uh, so at first, I experimented for myself because I wanted to experience uh, uh, what microdosing was. I was very skeptical because I only uh, yeah thought higher doses was was the thing. Um, but yeah, after my own experiment and uh, getting into contact with Jim Fadiman, I thought, hey, this is this is something worth uh, researching. So uh, yeah, after the first uh, microdose event that Jacobin uh, uh, organized with the Psychedelic Society of the Netherlands, uh, we decided to to build a platform, and uh, yeah, that's the whole idea. That, that the whole idea came from there. And um, yeah, build not only build a, uh, not only build a, a bridge to to the microdoses, but also to the researchers because yeah, we need them to do research on cluster headaches or, for instance, what we had with Elena uh, about ADHD. So yeah, that's where it all started. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that whole story. Um, it's interesting to me that it started with uh, with your friend with cluster headaches because uh, suicide rates are insane within this uh, illness, right? Yeah, it's called the suicide headache. Yeah, and uh, yeah, um, you've been uh, going on with this research. Um, have you found any tangible uses yet? Have you been able to help people with this? Yeah, well. Uh, uh, at first, of course, uh, to write about it and, and uh, that, that other people share their experience, that's really helpful. So that is why our community platform is so important uh, that they, that uh, yeah, uh, one experience can really be uh, valuable for someone else. Uh, we did find out that, that for most people with cluster headaches, microdosing is a little bit uh, uh, to less they need a little bit more like mini dosing yeah. uh, uh, like one gram of dried mushrooms for instance uh, instead of uh, a microdose that is mostly 0 0.2 grams of uh, dried mushrooms uh, but yeah that's also viable valuable because still uh, a mini dose is still easier to navigate and and to to plan uh, than a, a high dose um, so yeah um yeah um so many questions to dive in but first uh, let's go to uh, Jacobin. um you've been in this uh field for a long time as well how did you come up on it yeah for me it's also been uh, uh 20 years now uh <clears throat> i think i stumbled upon all of this by accident and uh i i think it just kept coming back into my life uh for a reason and maybe that reason was to help me <laughs> so mm. i really see these uh plant medicines and um somehow being involved professionally with this work that it's actually really supporting me in my mental health my well-being my uh personal growth so uh that's that's to sum it up and uh, yeah it started when i was 18 i found a, a job in amsterdam <clears throat> at a, a smart shop so selling these entheogenic herbs and plants and magic mushrooms and um, a lot more. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I got a really good understanding of how to use these um, 
yeah, these powerful substances with a lot of respect. And we did a lot of harm reduction work because we saw people, like the less they knew about it, the more uh, radically they would take it, the higher doses, uh, strong extracts of uh, salvia or, uh, yeah, just really strong psychedelics and then... Uh, uh, yeah, they could have really challenging experiences. So I was really fascinated by by this, and um, yeah, really, it it manifested to me the power of the mind. That was like the first thing where I saw, like, wow, this is really, um, yeah, th there is so much power. There is we and we have access to so much information in those moments that you take a high dose of a psychedelic. Um, but somehow I never thought I would become a microdosing coach one day or anything like this. <clears throat> so I uh, pursued other career paths and I moved to Argentina and I moved to Belgium and I was always exploring the outer world. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it kept coming back to my life and I just wanted to know more. I realized at some point I wanted to know more about this. So I started uh, volunteering for some organizations and um, uh, the therapeutic potential also called me and shamanism started to call me more and more. Uh, and I will say that for a long time, the experiences that I had were really uh, not, uh, not as useful. I think actually that I wasted a lot of good medicine on experiences that were just out of curiosity. So, um, mm. you know, even in shamanic ceremonies, I just couldn't make sense of it. And I was just hoping always that maybe with the next ceremony I get, I get it, or I understand what it's all about, or I get some revelations or so. So it really took a number of years, um, yeah, before I got the message. And I think it was because I wasn't ready or I hadn't done enough inner work to to really understand it. And nowadays we talk a lot about, um, you know, preparation, intention setting, um, uh, opening sacred space, holding space, you know, uh, be open to whatever arises within you um, and, and integration. So those concepts, now we have like a framework, a container to really understand our experiences with altered states. Mm -hmm. um, and once I started to learn that a little bit more, um, I started having more meaningful experiences. And uh, I will really say that over time, it has helped me in such a way that I'm pretty certain that I would have had probably five burnouts if uh, I hadn't come across oh, <laughs> psychedelics. <wow. laughs> um, because, yeah, I, I grew up being a really shy person, um, being actually quite a bit afraid of people, um, uh, interactions, and I thought it was all really unpredictable. And I really didn't know myself. I didn't have this inner compass to understand how I feel and that I can act upon how I feel um, and, you know, just pay attention to my own needs rather than other people's needs or your job's needs or your work's needs. Or, so it was always prioritizing, um, prioritizing work, prioritizing others. And yeah, that led me to a burnout like once or twice, I would say. And ever since, I just need to use my inner compass. And it's like, it's there, you have it. And just pay attention to how you feel. Um, so yeah, and, and this, this kind of uh, uh, bridges to our work where um, in our coaching, uh, I talk to people and we talk about the four dimensions of our being. So our physical dimension, our emotional, our cognitive and our spiritual. And you want to pay attention to all of those four dimensions. Mm. Uh, your microdose or your macrodose will be interacting with those four dimensions. Um, but also you in your day-to-day -day life. So um, uh, pay attention to that and then you have your, your guidance system. Yeah. So that's what it told me. And that's, of course, now what I'm passionate about sharing with others. So, yeah. Of course. Um, you both talked about um, the importance of, of guiding and or being coached by, uh, while doing microdosing. Uh, and perhaps you can elaborate what... Um, uh, we we just heard Jacobin say it's important to set an intention. Like you can get a lot more out of these microdoses if you prepare the right way. Is that correct? Yeah, um, that's true. And of course, uh, uh, everybody or not everybody, but people can uh, safely and and 
microdose on their own. Uh, but there are certain situations or people are in a certain period of time that they can use some tools uh, uh, to get the most out of a microdosing experience in this case. And um, so, so yeah, uh, we started off with uh, building the platform and, and guiding people on donation basis. And we started to find out, okay, so, uh, yeah, the, the, the basic tools, and of course it's not rocket science, but uh, uh, yeah, the basic tools to, for, for microdosing and uh, um, uh, really get the, 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 the right mindset uh, to, to start off on this journey uh, can, can help you uh, to get the most out of it. So that's why we are also started to build programs, uh, coaching programs. And um, yeah, in, in my experience, uh, my first microdosing experience, I really um, gained benefit from the tools I already had in my backpack from Buddhism, from mm -hmm. shamanism, uh, like uh, uh, my most famous of uh, 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 favorite uh, insight is don't take yourself too seriously if you if you are constantly identifying with your mind and your thoughts then it distracts and it's also an, an illusion uh let's say so that was my um universal insight the f one of the first i had with a high dose experience mm -hmm. but I, I i hadn't fully integrated it into my daily routine so microdosing really helped me to to uh, really integrated because you're doing it during your daily routine. So, um, yeah, you can, on the spot, you can integrate and implement and, uh, uh, these insights. Yeah. So, so that's why, uh, yeah, uh, the first page, page I, I wrote for the website was, uh, how to get, get, how, how to get the most out of your microdosing experience and like saving energy. If you see everything as energy, uh, like uh, my my uh, negative thoughts and uh, judging people and those kind of things. And if you pay attention that, okay, this this d doesn't give me energy, it costs me energy. And if you start to look at this, uh, at that, then, um, yeah, you slowly start to raise your energy so you get more conscious and aware of your surroundings and yourself and your patterns. And, um, yeah, so that is also one of our, uh, things that is implemented in the program. Um, so yeah, that's why I, uh, I, I noticed that, that some people can, can help, uh, get, um, uh, benefit from some sort of guidance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also just to add here, maybe, um, the, the, you know, the value of coaching, a lot of people think microdosing is like, okay, uh, tell me how much to take. Uh, tell me how often. Tell me in the morning and evening and how do I prepare it. And then, you know, then you have all the information. But actually, that is only a starting point. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, this is something that not everybody knows. And some people think also that these factors are all really important. But actually, we see them as a starting point. Like, yes, it's kind of unique. You find your own uh, ideal dose everyone has a different sensitivity so of course we will guide you in that we will give you some recommendations on how to you know go through that calibration process um, and, and and we can give some tips on how to take it and how often but then it is going to be your experience and, uh, and 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 it's in your life and it's with your intention also it's about like what do you want to achieve mm -hmm. if you can achieve something um, and and that's so that's where the coaching part really comes in and uh, yeah. Talking about uh, what are you willing to achieve? Uh, we talked about harm reduction, pain relief, um, insights. Uh, Jakobin, wh what has been your uh, focus with microdosing, or is it all of them? Or um, yeah, and uh, do you mean personally, or uh, yeah, for your in, personal in, journey? In yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah. There are different different uh, uh, levels on which you can set an intention. Like, of course, you can set an intention for your day, and uh, s s sometimes I do that. It's like, okay, today I really want to be in the flow. I want to just kind of, you know, uh, yeah, be in harmony with whatever unfolds and not trying to control everything. So that can be uh, beautiful and helpful. Um, and actually, this is also maybe relevant for, for instance, for people with ADHD or people who are taking this for focus. You're not just automatically getting focus for anything. You, you actually benefit much more from that focus if you know what you want to be doing with that focus on that particular day. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, it's really helpful to actually have a, 
a target there and uh, um, and be mindful of that and then in a in a more um, uh, long term sense uh, yeah, I also do set intentions um, because we can see. Um, if you do a microdosing cycle of, let's say, six to eight weeks or ten weeks, uh, okay, what am I going to focus on for this cycle? So, and, and it's really a piece of inner work. Um, what is holding me back? Uh, and a, a lot of people uh, in our coachings, when I ask them, what would your intention be or what do you want to achieve? Then I often hear something like, oh, yeah, if I could just have a bit more peace of mind or if I could have a little less worries or anxiety then i would already be super happy but mm -hmm. that is not really an attention that is more like okay i want a bit less of that but uh yeah if you can ask the universe for anything you want and you say i want a bit less of that you're still focusing on that thing that you actually don't want <laughs> yeah. so to have a um a north star something that helps you with your growth something that really brings you as a human being to the next level uh, maybe you can really achieve some of your dreams or some of the bigger things you're um um yeah uh, yeah you're you're maybe not even there to dream about and and then to connect it to my story actually uh i also learned uh, your weaknesses are your strengths so me being very shy and and uh, i would have never imagined that talking to strangers would become my job and that i would even record these <laughs> <laughs> these talks <laughs> uh, and now we're doing these kind of things and uh, so I'm really enjoying the process of growth and just being surprised about yourself and the things you eventually um, manage uh, to do <laughs> that seems like a wonderful transformation <laughs> yeah yeah um, uh, you've both been really intrigued with microdosing but instead of keeping it for yourselves or for your friends you started the whole institute and why the bigger picture? Why trying to share all this information with the rest? Mm, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I um, when I was young, I had one uh, psychedelic experience, and uh, I, I I learned or I had the insight that I was good at uh, bringing people together and 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 seeing connections of uh, uh, different organizations of, or people together bringing together and yeah uh, i just love that um and that that uh, we normally go to concerts and i i invite different uh, friends from different groups and put them together and it's a whole mix of, of nice fresh energy so um and I, I had realizations like okay i don't have to uh, follow a path or a professional path with the education I had. Uh, it could also be uh, something, a gift that I, I naturally have. So um, I had that realization and, and then and when we met and, and decided to build a platform and a website and I was like, okay, now I can do where I'm good at. And um, so, yeah, uh, starting with the Facebook group and live meetups and um, yeah, we thought, and of course, also with the background from my friend, what I just told, um, uh, uh, we wanted to. I wanted to reach as much as possible uh, people to, to, yeah, to share what we, what we, uh, not what what we uh, know, but what the community knows. So, so we find it really important that people learn from each other, and then because it's uh, still in its infinite infancy state. Uh, that uh, yeah we can from yeah we can learn from each other and that's uh, also always the the thing how we approached it like um, yeah we we don't have the expertise at first but um, yeah now we gain after five years of gaining information um, yeah it's 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 best to to give that to everybody so that's why we have a whole website with free information uh, to share and um, yeah I don't know if you want to add something to it. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, information wants to be free. I'm also a big believer in all the democratic models of, you know, just the fact that there are patents, uh, that information is being restricted from people who could really benefit from that information in this case, because they can benefit from microdosing or they, they have an illness or a condition. But yeah, in general, if we can make that available, I think that's been the biggest uh, driving force. And also to see how much people enjoy being in contact with others. Because still, 
there is a little bit of stigma around using a psychedelic or using it, you know, in your average daily life um, in a microdose. It's not something everybody would just mention. Um, and then to have uh, a group of like-minded people to just, you know, share this with, uh, yeah, it does wonders. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, and, and we find it really important from an harm reduction perspective that yeah. we saw, like, okay, the first microdosing event was 120 people and we were like, okay, there's a big interest in it. People are doing it. Uh, so now it, it, it's, it's best to, to, yeah, to, to, to build a safe environment where people can discuss this. And if somebody has a risk or a pitfall or something that uh, a negative uh, experience, it's really valuable to share that too. And not only give like a sort of a, um, a most promising uh, solution to your problem uh, uh, type of advertising, but, but really uh, make a realistic viewpoint on what microdosing can do for people and, uh, and, and yeah, the pros and cons and uh, yeah. yeah. So it is all inspired by Jim Fadiman who uh, does, uh, he calls it search. So just uh, 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 collecting anecdotal reports and, uh, and, 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 really find yeah what who is microdosing why people are microdosing and uh yeah the truth seems very important for you guys in this like not just selling the good sides but also being real about the, the bad sides yeah. uh is that because um uh yeah well why is that <laughs> before yeah. i make assumptions well the, yeah um Microdosing is definitely not a quick fix or a solution to your problems, and we find it really important that that we profile ourselves on uh, with our uh, with our content and with how we express ourselves. That uh, that yeah, we want to give as much as a realistic viewpoint uh, as it is, and then that's why we also bring the bridge to all the researchers because we can't claim anything as long as they don't. Uh, have uh, 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 gather some proof and anecdotal stories are very important uh, citizen science is really important um, because then you have all kind of rough diamonds that you can yeah. uh, gather and then you can say hey people are microdosing for ADHD let's find out if it's really benefiting them um, so so that's why citizen science is so important um, but yeah since two years you see a lot of companies uh, uh thinking hey we can sell this as a as a product um and and you see all kinds of uh promising advertising uh, uh on microdosing uh, and that concerns us a little bit because yeah, does it uh, scare you yeah because we get a lot of emails from people who are really desperate and have like big medical issues and they see these these advertising uh advertisements and um, so yeah, you you mislead uh, uh, people that are very vulnerable, and uh, we think that is uh, yeah. N you can do that with other sectors or uh, whatever, but not with psychedelics. Psychedelics has to be treated with respect uh, because it's um, it's a very powerful uh, plant medicine and earth medicine. But um, yeah, we don't want to make the same mistakes as in the sixties, and um, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, you have a big group now of people sharing information. And uh, um, are there any like stories that really surprised you, like insights that you got that really wowed um, you? Stories that wowed us. Um, yeah, I think we definitely had in the area of um, of cluster headaches, we had mm -hmm. definitely some people who were really surprised that um, what microdosing could do for them. It doesn't always mean, again, we are realistic, <laughs> <laughs> that the cluster headaches stay away forever, um, but they had less cluster headaches, they could feel them coming, uh, uh, and they could prevent it on many occasions. Um wow. Um, then in general, also the ADHD population can benefit a lot from microdosing. Uh, again, it's not the same protocol or the, the exact same recipe for everyone, but they feel um, not only that they have more focus or they have this capability that they thought they didn't have, and then they can activate it somehow, um, especially when they do something that they really enjoy. 
when they're really interested in the topic, then it goes. And also they feel much better about themselves. So all these, you know, worries about am I good enough or can I, you know, just for once finish something um, that seems to, um, yeah, that, that seems to uh, improve a lot. Um, what, el what else do we have? Yeah, the, uh, the, they, they, they also experience that they, they are taken off their automatic pilot. And of course, uh, I think, for people who are microdosing and have a, a positive effect, uh, it, it, uh, yeah, uh, most people experience that, that you f feel more aware of yourself and more connected to yourself and being more in the present moment. And so, uh, and yeah, so what surprised me the most is that uh, what uh, Jim Fenneman always said, uh, if he gets the question on, is it a placebo effect, that that people who had a certain expectations, uh, uh, especially in the beginning, when his book uh, Psychedelics Explorers uh, Guide came out in 2011, uh, then he st uh, slowly started to, to collect uh, reports, and people didn't know anything, so they they just had exp exp um, uh, expectations. Couldn't have on. been placebo. It, yeah, could right. could could have could yeah. not have been, yeah, and um, um, so 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 they they um, they had the expectation of oh maybe get more focus or energy or something, and then they suddenly experienced that they made healthier choices, for instance, and uh, eating uh, healthier food because they were more aware of their body, uh, but they didn't expect that. So if if these report from ni fifty nine countries. Uh, from different uh, ethnic backgrounds, um, if there are similar reports, then yeah, you can't uh, um, ignore the fact that that they that they experience that. And of course, you can say yeah, that's anecdotal stories. It's not true. It's not clinical proven. But it surprised me that from all these different countries, they had similar reports that they were not looking for or something. Mm. So that surprised me most actually. Yeah, is that a book you would recommend to people to to read? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, uh, it it's not really a microdosing book, so it's uh, uh, how how to safely guide people on their uh, macro journeys or a higher dose journey. Uh, but there's one chapter in it, and that's where it all started uh, with microdosing. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a book uh, we we recommend. Yeah. And the book on microdosing? Do you have one, or maybe you, Jacobine, that you would really recommend to the listeners to read? Well, um, Jim actually shared with us that he is working on a book exclusively about microdosing. Wow. Um, uh, we've been chatting about it for a while, actually. I think we've been even like encouraging him to do it because it's like uh, uh, definitely uh, he he is the the pioneer and and like the godfather of microdosing. So he is working on that. Um, it, there there are several other books that I can recommend. Um, Recently, one came out. It's called the Microdosing Guidebook, and it offers also a full, um, yeah. It, it goes into all the all the different aspects of microdosing, and it's also very re realistic. It's written by a nurse practitioner with a lot of background, also in research and in working with psychedelics. So uh, that one I, I definitely recommend. Um, yeah, and, and anything else? I mean, and then there's so much more books that you could read that are just very inspirational. Uh, yeah, like A Really Good Day, Ayelet Waldman, that was the, the first uh, microdosing uh, book. Uh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a novel. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a novel, um, but it also has like a research background and uh, yeah. Uh, and and that's also the, the whole, the, the title, A Really Good Day uh, is, is in the end why people are microdosing is like in the end you want to have a really good day. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, that's one book. Yeah, and then recommend. think about it, like what happens to your life if you realize that you're having many really good days in a row or uh, in a short amount of time, then uh, that's where this transformation happens again. Yeah. And then you end up with a really good life. Yeah, Yes. exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And maybe just to add here also that in our programs where, um, so we have a six-week intensive program uh, on microdosing and the people who sign up for that are often, I would say, like really ready to, to go deep and mm. really willing to, you know, work with whatever comes up and be part of this community. And they're actually what's surprising me with them is that they're... Um, that it seems to be that they're giving it really a good push and 
that microdosing becomes really their life companion uh, in in making change and yeah making like unexpected change happen for them. So it's much more on the level of mm -hmm. psychological and emotional work that they're doing. But uh, it surprises me how uh, yeah how big the transformations are. Yeah. And is that personal growth or is it even bigger than that? Yeah, it, I mean, it depends on, on the person. So um, uh, that they, they seem to get so much insight in their past, in their connection with their ancestors or, you know, their family line, all of any generational trauma that they are somehow part of and that they want to, you know, flip around for themselves. So there's so much consciousness and awareness around everything that's part of their life. And also how interconnected they are with everything else, with nature. So this is where people get really big insights on how connected they actually feel to trees uh, or to certain parts of the world or where they belong to. Or, um, so it's a, it's a very holistic uh, yeah, approach that people just take on and they were very ready for it. And then they can yeah. use that to their benefit for the rest of their life. So yeah, super grateful to, um, to witness that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that's that's one one of the the things we do uh, with coaching is that we take people to the the uh, the phase of, of their process where they are have most access to uh, pers uh, uh, personal uh, development or that they yeah um, it all depends on what what phase you, of your process you are if you are in the victim role and and think that microdosing is going to work for you then um, yeah that that expectation will uh, lead you to uh, a disappointment uh, but if you think hey I am the main character in this story and and microdosing can be a tool uh, uh and an aid then then yeah then you have the right expectation and the right mindset to get the most out of the whole journey yeah before we continue with the rest of the interview i'd like to inform you on one of the programs we run at microdosing institute that might interest you our six-week microdosing intensive is the most holistic and powerful option we offer for microdosing support 95% of participants indicate that they had a positive personal transformation in just six weeks. Additionally, many participants gained lifelong community connections and valuable tools to continue exploring and integrating insights even after the program has ended. One participant noted, The arc of the program worked well and guided us through our experiences. It was very clear from everyone sharing that we had all been through a profound process together that touched each of us deeply. To start your journey of personal transformation with microdosing, please visit the link in our show notes or head to our website. Yeah, uh, Jacobine, you mentioned that you needed to do probably some inner work before it started working for you. Um, has it been the same for you, Hein, or did, it, did you see it as a tool right from the start? And well, when I first uh, experimented with microdosing back in 2016, then um, uh, I was very skeptic. So I, I also have a, a I, I'm, I live a happy life. I'm positive. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, really, um, yeah, uh, a happy person. So I thought uh, th this is not going to change anything for me. Uh, but after three weeks, I, I noticed subtle effects on uh, uh, subtle changes in my perspective of uh, feeling more empathy towards my children or um, uh, reacting differently towards my colleagues or yeah, seeing things from a different perspective. So, so uh, uh, a subtle change, I call it my inner revolution of uh, also uh, uh, implementing these insights that I knew, like feeling more connected or, for instance, one of my biggest uh, insights was uh, that I, I'm... I, I can create instead of react to the, my environment and um, I, I'm not what happens to me, I'm, I'm uh, what I, I choose to become. So, so um, yeah, I, I started to play with these intentions and with these uh, uh, focus on uh, well, microdosing. And so, uh, yeah, for me personally, that was a, a big change, although it was very subtle mm. uh, in, in my, yeah, how it, how it um, unfolds. Mm. Um, is microdosing for everyone? 
because I I've been hearing you guys say it's different for everyone. Everybody has a different experience. Uh, could you elaborate on um, why it's different and should we all be doing this? Because it sounds amazing if I <laughs> if I hear you talk about it. I don't think uh, psychedelics in general are not for everyone, uh, and also microdosing. I think I think uh, it, it has to capture your your interest. So we are not going to convince anyone to use psychedelics uh, or microdosing uh, psychedelics. So uh, so yeah, but but everybody who is like interested in seeing an article or seeing uh, uh, how to change your mind on Netflix or a fantastic fun guy and get interested in and or at least be open of the of of what psychedelics can can do because. It has been around for for thousands of years. Uh, indigenous people ha have been uh, have been using this for for uh, religious and spiritual and medicinal purposes uh, uh, for hundreds or maybe thousands of years. So we got lost in that uh, 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 on that knowledge. So uh, yeah, to to be open on on uh, uh, yeah of, of uh, the potential healing powers of psychedelics is is a, is a is an entrance that people say okay for for those people it's really interesting. But if you are really a control freak or uh, don't want to change or, or that sort of thing or are very skeptical to it, then then yeah probably it isn't if you don't get the call uh, of it. So yeah yeah. Yeah, what you said about, um, I think, being open to experiencing something new or trying something different, but that it should not be out of desperation or it should not be out of... Um, we also often get people come to us who are really in a very difficult time of their life, like they're in turmoil or they're in a crisis. And um, then the, the, the yeah, the emotional depths that you're going through may get amplified because of a psychedelic. Mm. Um, so that, for instance, would not be a good time to try microdosing for the first time. Um, so, but if you are in a relatively stable uh, situation for yourself, but you just see that there's room for improvement and you're really willing to explore um, how that could be done, and usually that's people who are also open to meditation or breath work or uh, body work or dance or uh, so many other methods that also are really great. Um, yeah, so and that's of course the majority of the people. So yeah, and that's where we see now how this is yeah taken uh, on a larger scale. It's taking on, and yeah. but it requires that curiosity and that sort of willingness to also do a bit of your own research to really understand what you're taking and why you're taking it and how. And essentially, it comes down to building a relationship with this uh, substance, this plant medicine or sacred earth medicine, or we have beautiful terms for them these days, um, because it is not just something external that's been given to you that you've taken and you hope for the best. But um, one of the things also that surprises me in our community that many people start calling the mushrooms their allies uh, or their, uh, you know, good friend that's always with me, that really wants the best for me. And I just really like this way of um, working together uh, with uh, a different element in nature to uh, understand the bigger picture of what we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's almost like it's a key to accessing more powers that we already have in our bodies, if you say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. And it, this reminds me of uh, going off on a branch, but uh, the the book, the Immortality Key, which is all about uh, the relationship between life and death, and uh, how many of us are um, afraid of dying or afraid of death. Um, and actually, what that tells us is that we need to re uh, review our relationship with being alive. What does it mean to be alive? Um, and then there are all these practices such as taking a high dose of psychedelics, doing an ice bath, doing intense breath work that are actually mini death experiences or that gives you this experience of you think you're dying. <laughs> and it's usually the, the ego or that part of yourself that wants to keep control that is at that moment uh, dying a little. So, yeah, this, this book is all about um, having those kind of experiences to actually re-establish our relationship between being alive and 
and also that it comes to an end at some point and it's a cycle yeah. so yeah these are also <laughs> examples of like the, the deeper understanding that uh, um, that psychedelics can really help us with yeah. yeah we get really caught up in the in the normal life yeah there's so much more to pay attention to yeah somehow it's tempting to or tempting we somehow get a bit stuck on the service level of things there's already so much to worry about in our world i do understand that um but yeah it gets more interesting when we when we go deeper yeah yeah um talking about microdosing and and uh you mentioned that it's uh, still in its infancy uh, there's not a big group using it yet or or practicing it um how do you see that grow uh, over the next few years uh will it ha has it been expanding fast or it has been expanding fast yeah the, over the last two years i think uh, it, it especially it, yeah. we have to be careful because we are in the bubble of uh, mm, microdosing of so we <laughs> it, it it feels like everybody is is doing it but it's of course it's not uh, but uh I'm very happy that that uh, because it's getting more and more mainstream, uh, and it's uh, in in different articles and, and online forums, but also on TV or so. Um, yeah, people are starting to to really get to know the uh, uh, how you can safely use psychedelics and and understand and also uh movies like or, or documentaries like how to change your mind and the book uh, when the book came out we saw a, a peak on 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 uh, mm. people that are interested and um there wasn't a section of microdosing in the book but the the documentary on netflix uh jim fadiman explains a little bit about microdosing and yeah of course we we check out our our uh, visitors on online on our website and we saw a, a high peak it doubled the the visitors i believe wow um so yeah um one of my hidden agendas w with with microdosing was to use it as a trojan horse to to, to slowly uh, put it into society and that people talk about it and they they see it as a f homeopathic or a food supplement and they're not afraid of it like high doses with yeah you can it causes bad trips and those kind yeah, of yeah we all heard stories. horror stories yeah, yeah. so now uh, um it's like uh, riding a bicycle with side wheels uh, mm -hmm. and slowly um, learn how to 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 use uh, a psychedelics in your in your uh, daily life and yeah mm. nice um, it's getting more popular are there any uh, developments going on are there new uh, medicines coming to us or are we starting to use them different is there anything on the horizon that's worth sharing yeah, definitely. Uh, the development, I think, is the strongest at the moment is um, uh, many more people are microdosing. It's easier to find information about it these days. It seems to be easier in, um, you know, Oregon, Canada, like in some places around the world where they're looking at decriminalization and legalization. So people are already growing mushrooms and all of that. But it sparks a lot of interest from professionals. So a lot of professionals uh, have microdosed for a while and say like, actually, there is also really a demand amongst my clients. And those people can be coaches or yoga teachers or uh, tree doctors or um, mushroom uh, mycologists. And they just have people come to them who want to microdose and they want to do it. They want to offer this as an additional practice, as a tool, not as the main thing, but as something that could help. Um, yeah, this help these people take bigger steps and more conscious steps in what they're already doing. So I think that is the biggest um, development. And uh, I, I think what's to come is the next step is bridging um, from these professionals, I would still say this is, and this includes us, of course, it's coming up from the grassroots, from yeah, the underground, from the people. <laughs> mm. um, and then more top down, there is uh, the healthcare system that might be getting interested very soon um, because those high doses are really um, yeah, an interesting uh, treatment protocol for depression and addictions and, and so many other things, but it requires so much resources so much time so much care carefulness um medical screening and 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 then still it might not be the best way to treat some people but microdosing is then somewhere in between um so 
yeah, I, I think this is at some point going to happen. Definitely for some of the uh, conditions that we talked about today, like cluster headaches and ADHD and so on. Yeah. And the scientific research that you are yeah. co-helping with is going to help a lot with that. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like uh, within a few years, I think uh, 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 psilocybin treatment will, uh, uh, in in combination with uh, psycho and uh, psychotherapy, will be. Uh, an option for the, the mental health care to to use so so we think that that microdosing can play a role in the aftercare or in preparation for these treatments uh, and as an aftercare i think uh, uh, microdosing really can play a role in that so that's why uh, yeah with our programs we we try to build a blueprint on how you can safely implement that as an aftercare or as a preparation for these these high dose journeys and uh, um, yeah and uh, all these uh, practitioners that uh, want to include microdosing into what they already offer um, they should do your co training course I assume <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do they yeah. stand to gain from from your course <clears throat> um, yeah so in our course um, we actually focus on the experience in the first place of the experience of the microdoser. So everybody goes through uh, a six week process themselves first to really learn how to build that relationship with the substance, uh, to, to set an intention um, and to start really integrating all their insights. And they may come from, uh, uh, yeah, benefits that they've experienced and and you know good stuff but also maybe from challenges that came up along the way in those six weeks so from those they extract their insights and they integrate that um, and having had this experience and and being coached by a coach throughout the entire uh, trajectory and having kept a journal and just being familiar with some of the elements that really work well in this process um, uh, your energy levels what Hein mentioned uh, uh, all these all these processes that bring you extra awareness combined. Um, that's what our um, the people in our training program are going to facilitate for others. So we spend a lot of time actually uh, in the practice, hands on, uh, doing that. Yeah, and in addition, um, since we feel so strongly about um, you know having a scientific approach as well, really understanding where are the boundaries um, when it comes to medication, medical conditions, uh, and also therapy. Uh, we are not therapists, we are not medical doctors, so we need to draw a clear line there. But we also want um, coaches, the coaches of the future, to really understand, um, yeah, how can you best support a person and can you work together with uh, their medical practitioner or with a psychiatrist and, um, you know, so initially there might be a referral process and then perhaps at a later point, people can come back and start microdosing when it's the right time. So mapping out, you know, what the boundaries are, um, um, scientific research, and a few other topics that we feel are very important uh, are part of the training. And uh, those are often masterclasses taught by experts in those fields. So yeah, combining all of that. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. So what's, uh, what's in the future for MDI? I'm, what, what, do you have any big plans for the future you want to share? Yeah, well, um, we just uh, launched the 10-month the pro certificate program. So uh, that is also still sort of in the future. So that, that it was the first, it is the first uh, uh, we've launched uh, in January, I believe. So, um, so yeah, um, still have a few months to go. And uh, yeah. We are still keeping uh, building community, sharing stories, building bridges to different uh, different organizations and different uh, uh, experts in the field. Um, so yeah, the main goal or the main mission is to reintegrate the potential healing power of psychedelics into general society. And um, I think we share this mission uh, together with MAPS and, and Beckley Foundation and other big organizations. And um, yeah, if we do it together and uh, uh, then, then we can take this to a higher level. And, um, and um, yeah, 
I really wish that uh, that uh, what didn't work in the 60s uh, uh, now uh, sees daylight and that it becomes uh, an option uh, as a, a legal treatment. And we're not there yet, but um, yeah, I think um, we have the time with us and the, the science is also showing promising results. So um, yeah, we're very hopeful. Mm. Wonderful. And and one uh, sub goal, but not unimportant in move, yeah, helping move this whole movement forward, is also um, bringing in more voices of indigenous people and practitioners who come from a lineage of ancestral healing with these medicines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because in the end, we have been you know around here since the 50s and 60s discovering a lot and documenting it really well and experimenting really well. Um, but yeah, these, uh, these practices are actually really ancient and we're, we know it's going to go five, six generations back, but maybe even longer. Um, and these people have this practice fully embedded in a culture and in an understanding of of life and nature uh, that is somehow for us today as modern people quite difficult to grasp. So we can learn a lot from them and a lot of those voices are just not heard. Mm. Um, only since maybe a year or two we start to see a little bit more, um, you know, healers and and shamans and people from different traditions from all over the world because these practices were literally everywhere um, and of course there are language barriers and there are geographical barriers but um, yeah we we try to do what we can and at this moment those are small steps we have one indigenous educator but we will hopefully have a second one coming year um, we donate money to projects that are um, also helping with um, conservation of the areas where these medicines come from um, so yeah, this is a start uh, to uh, and, and and this I think still requires quite a lot of effort to make it a to normalize it to yeah see that it's not just yeah. you know white wealthy people um, doing this. Yeah, there's so much history and so much wisdom there. Yeah, yeah. it would be wonderful to have more uh, availability towards that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's about conservation. It's all there, <laughs> but if we only uh, and w and we now that our platform is growing, um, we can decide which messages we amplify and which messages we just say like they're there, everybody knows them. So, uh, but when we can emphasize some of the other ones that uh, yeah, yeah, they're a bit left out. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So Reminds much. me of the, uh, the the story Jim Fenneman always tells that. He first thought, oh, I discovered something new, microdosing. And then an anthropologist said to him, don't you think that indigenous people have been using also tiny amounts instead of only higher doses? And it was like, okay, so now I'm the rediscoverer of microdosing. Uh, so yeah, we, we know, all, uh, yeah, we acknowledge that also. So it's, 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 it's very important to, to also uh, build a bridge to the people who already have been working for, for hundreds of years with that and, and bring that knowledge to, to, to us because we can learn a lot about uh, that. And, and uh, our team member, Sochi, they, she learned uh, us or teaches us that, that a, a plant medicine or an earth medicine like the, the mushrooms, they, they have a spirit, they have something to tell us. And for Western people, it's 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 almost mumbo jumbo or something, but it really resonates with me. Like, okay, and of course, everything you take in does something to you. It gives you energy. It gives you this or that. And and yeah, this these are mental vitamins or whatever how you can see it. But to acknowledge that it has a spirit, it has an intelligence that has been here for uh, millions of years and so so maybe uh, it's time to listen and and like uh, to, in the words of Paul Stamets that 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 these these mushrooms learn us to connect with nature and and listen to nature and what it needs because um, yeah so it helps us being better human beings yeah mm -hmm. it seems that we in our modern society have lost our frame of reference and MDI is bringing a new one back where we can truly understand the power of these wonderful products. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> to keep learning more about microdosing, please subscribe to Microdosing Table Talks wherever you listen to podcasts. This is a wonderful, zero-cost way to support our initiatives at Microdosing Institute. And if you'd like to help us teach more people about this powerful practice, 
please consider leaving a review. Your kind words go a long way.